Laura from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another wonderful Wednesday. It's that time again, it's time for Ask an Engineer, the longest running live electronics show in the known universe. So it is. So every single week we do Ask an Engineer, 7 p.m. is show and tell, 8 p.m. is Ask an Engineer, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get into what's on the show in just a, a minute or so, um, but we wanted to um, just say the maker community, the engineering community had a big loss. Um, Grant Yamahara, uh, Yamahara passed away, I believe it was Monday night. Yeah. Um, brain aneurysm. Um, a lot of people know, um, totally unexpected, Grant totally shocking. from Mythbusters. So if you've watched Mythbusters in the past, um, you probably know Adam Savage, you know, Carrie, you know, Jamie, you know, all these folks. Uh, Grant was one of the engineers, um, also known for making the engine, uh, Energizer Bunny, working on the Matrix. I uh, worked with Adam Savage, I think, on Terminator as well and um we knew grant um we corresponded a few times um i, I wrote about grant back in 2014 when i saw that grant Mahara was going to be part of uh mauser's marketing efforts and i wrote about it and the the first thing i thought was wow this is interesting because this was you know like a, a high profile celebrity in the television world who made things and did engineering coming to the maker world mm -hmm. and uh 2015 cover of make and then uh, I think it was either earlier this year or late last year uh, Grant went to the Arduino factory same factory that Lady, Lady Eight and I went to and um, if everyone who knows Grant said the same thing he was uh, someone who wanted to share who used his skills to bring joy to people who did engineering uh, that brought people into the field um, mm -hmm. one of the things that you've seen on Twitter and more um, and emails and just like you know our community uh, obviously is a fan of Grant he said I got my start in engineering because of Grant so there's a lot of people that he had a big impact on yeah. um, Lady Ada woke me up it was whatever like, it was like one in the morning. midnight and yeah. you know it's 2020 and this 2020 isn't quitting and the first thing I said is well goodness was it like COVID or what happened and it was a sudden death um, the other uh, colleagues that he had from Mythbusters, everyone's in shock and still yeah. dealing with this. And so um, one of the things that you can do, because I feel like you know we have a platform and we have um, maybe ways to help people is go check out Grant's past videos. Um, they were meant to be watched and shared. Send them to someone, especially a young engineer or someone who, who ha hasn't got that spark yet. Um, one of the videos uh, that I saw earlier today was Grant made this blue laser Iron Man glove cool. and you pointed it at a balloon. Oh, and it popped And it, it popped the balloon. You love that stuff. And, yeah, and like, you know, this is, this was one of, this, this is one of the people that helped grow this maker community together. Yeah. So, um, He's so inspirational, so as, kind. As, as, as sad as this is, you know, people live on with the memories we have and memories now exist in a form that you can play over and over and over again. So, you know, if you want to, Make her to do for all of us. Um, share Grant's video, share his work, share the things that he did. Go check out on Make right now. They have a uh, story from um, when they 
did the cover feature, but also the editor in chief, uh, Mike, has a story. And uh, check out some of the old Mythbusters and uh, share it with people who might not know about it. And I think, you know, that's the best we can do. That's the best things that we can do. And I think that's, you know, that, would, that was Grant's mission mm-hmm. um, to make more engineers. So if there's any updates on what the family's doing or what uh, the Mythbusters crew is doing, we'll put them up on our website just like we always do. Um, you know, I already saw a talk of uh, they wanted – Grant made a, a baby Yoda. Yeah. And what they wanted to do is have it go to, like, kids' hospitals and stuff like that. Yeah. So if there's something that we can do to help out with that, um, I, I know that uh, Grant used our stuff because we were on email threads in the past also with some of the other folks in Mythbusters. Um, so if there's anything we can do to help, we'll do that as well. So anyways um, – Let's uh, let's kick off the show and uh, let's talk about engineering. Okay. Okay. I think Grant would have liked that. That's right. Okay. On tonight's show, we are shipping. Don't forget. Safely. Adafruit, Adafruit is shipping safely. Our team is safe. Uh, maybe we'll talk about what's going on in New York and more. It's all you know. It's all good news. Um, we had some milestones at New York hit, but um, I just wanted to let everyone know, if you order right now. Uh, we have now updated our shipping times. We ship even faster than ever. So you know how back in the day if you ordered before 11 a.m. and it was like an expedited order, you, it would go out? Yeah. We're back to that. Yay. So most of our team is back. Um, we do staggered shifts. We do all the things to keep us safe. Um, but now we have, um, we, we're caught up and then a little bit ahead. So when you place an order, you support us. These are pre-COVID photos. A little bit of a reminder. We would not be standing this close and not without masks. Um, but these are some older photos, but these are the folks that you support when you place your order. An independent, woman-owned, open-source hardware company in New York City, trying to do the best we possibly can given all the circumstances. So thank you. You've carried us all this time. Um, if you're thinking about placing an order, please do. It helps us. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects and more. Lady Ada will talk about the projects that were on the show and the yep. people who shared them. John Parks Workshop, we have a little bit of preview video and then a Make Code Minute. Towards the end of the show, we'll do our Python on Hardware newsletter video edition by Katney. Got some time travel, look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. We got some made in New York City factory footage. We got some 3D printing. We have everyone's favorite segment, DigiKey and Adafruit present. Dun, dun. I am MPI. We'll do some new products. Got a little bit of top secret. You'll answer, we'll answer your questions. And we do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash discord or discord.gg slash adafruit, where you can join all 21,000 of us. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. Yay! All the engineering we can cram into an hour. Okay, all right. Well, first up, um, let's go to what happened on Show and Tell. I'd love to say what happened. folks showed up, but folks shared things. Yes. Who's on the Show and Tell with the share? I'm glad you asked. Jeff came by, and he's got a cool 1980s HP digital counter, and he was using it to calibrate a real time clock to make it even more perfect. And he showed uh, him calibrating it from, you know, being 100 hertz off to being only like 2 hertz off or like 0.1 hertz. So that's, that's pretty cool. All done in CircuitPython. Uh, maybe he'll document that project. That'd be cool. Melissa came by with a Raspberry Pi demo. Um, she actually published a guide this week on making an e-ink. Uh, weather station using Python and uh, Raspberry Pi. And uh, next up, she showed up a little calendar reminder program. So uh, two Raspberry Pi e-ink projects coming on deck from Melissa. Uh, JP uh, turned his RGP matrix into an on-air sign because uh, his kids are going to be um, uh, doing Zoom calls for the next semester. They're, they're going to be studying from home, uh, according to the LA uh, mayor. And so, and uh, school councils, and so having an on-air sign keeps people from opening doors or disrupting folks who are on a Zoom call. No and Pedro showed off uh, their uh, ball game that they developed with uh, Liz. It's called Pixel Hoops. It uses Circuit Python and RG Matrix to keep time, and an infrared break beam um, sensor. Aaron uh, is working on an LED ukulele using. Um, a feather sense uh, that to detect audio through the microphone and um, a prop maker wing to drive the LEDs and uh, she's she's gonna add all sorts of cool like sound reactive effects uh, thanks to um, Katni's and Roy's work on the LED animations library in CircuitPython. Dan showed off the first demo of uh, BLE working under an HCI interface. Uh, we've added uh, Bluefruit BLEIO support to the NRF 2840 
yay, that was first. Then we added it to desktop using Bleak, so now you can use the same libraries with Mac, Windows, and Linux, yay. And third up, we're adding support uh, to HCI, UART, VLE interfaces. A lot of chips use HCI as their interface, um, so he's adding support to that, and he demoed uh, the first advertising. So it shows up on his phone, it's like, yes, there's a BLE device that's sending data, so that's very good. Um, the first step is the most exciting. Scott is uh, an allocation debugger to try to help figure out where allocations are, are going and whether optimizations are actually optimizing. Uh, check that out also on the deep dive, he'll be doing on Friday. Um, Kevin came by uh, from DigiKey uh, and wanted to give people a heads up that the Make August edition is going to have the DigiKey Boards Guide, 2020 Board Guide. Um, I have a little video. There's a lot of augmented reality stuff in this board guide. Um, if you're not a subscriber to Make, subscribe because you'll get the next issue. It'll come with the Boards Guide, um, all the best hardware that's come out in the last year. And he's going to be working on getting a big clue. Like he's going to make a clue like this big two feet by three feet. And uh, he's gonna come by next week and maybe show the beginnings of that. Liz is working on a DIY Pi Portal stream deck and an emoji uh, checker. Mohib uh, has an electronic lockbox that uses a Pi Portal, a relay, and a battery. Uh, you, you type in codes and it like opens or closes and it uses AWS backend and you can like use it to like send text messages to. So it's like really advanced. Um, but it's a, it's a tutorial, it's a basic tutorial that you don't need to have any experience in doing AWS uh, Lambda functions before. He documented all, and CircuitPython is a great way to get started with IoT projects. Um, then David and Alex came by and gave some more demos for their Rover Wing. It's a new Kickstarter product that they have. Um, they showed a Rover driving that can, uh, you know, correct for... Uh, bumps are being moved. It can do exact 90 degree angles and straight lines, which is very impressive um, using just an IMU. And uh, they're working on a self balancing robot project using the Rover Wing next. So stay tuned. All right, all participants on the show and tell will eventually have a sticker. Um, as of, uh, you know, like last week. As of like yesterday, um, <laughs> because that was my, yeah, it's been one long day this week so far. Um, our shipping. Team said that we can have shipments um, go out pretty much the way they used to, um, and so we'll be back to doing stickers. And I wanted to make sure that was in place first. Yes. So okay, um, this is all part of our eight for live series of shows. Uh, you can tune into JP's show tomorrow. Um, here's a little bit of a preview of what JP's going to show tomorrow. Tuesdays, we have Make Code Live with John Park. And then um, every single week during JP's show, we have Make Code Minute. Here is the latest Make Code Minute. Take it away, JP. What I want to show today is a really cool extension in Make Code Arcade that's called Status Bar. What you'll see here is I have a little uh, game that I've created. It doesn't do much right now, but I've got my little character. And what you'll notice is that my character has a little hit point counter on top of her head. Uh, and as I contact this evil slug thing here, you'll notice my hit points are going down. Um, and then what I've set up is a little status bar that's vertical on this rug here, which will refill me, but you'll notice that its status bar goes down. Uh, and then if I want to refill the status bar on that carpet, I'm just going to touch this computer terminal here like a hacker, and, and now I've got uh, that uh, refilled. So by adding this status bar extension from the advanced extensions menu, you get all of these items that are built for creating a new status bar and setting its width and height, which determines its um, orientation, as well as what the status bar is for, things like health and magic and, and uh, hit points and other things. And then we have a whole bunch of blocks that are used for setting the value, changing the value. So I have right now an overlap block that, that reduces the value, for example. And then we have these events. These are the what happens to a status bar when it reaches a certain point. Um, so if you look at my uh, scene here, uh, you'll see that I have on status bar kind health, zero, uh, 
this, for this status, then the camera shake uh, is what occurs. So on my uh, character's health getting, getting down to zero, um, then we know we can run an event. So you can track things with these, sort of like um, metadata that's carried around on the characters. Um, and do things like trigger the refill. So when I when I cover up, uh, the character covers up or overlaps that computer sprite, then you can see I'm adjusting the uh, status bar value and the rug status bar value here, or the computer value tells the rug status bar value to up. So uh, really cool for things like RPGs. So that is how you can add status bars to your game and uh, build all kinds of complex behavior that's really easy for the player to see. And that is your Make Code Minute. Okay, so tune in tomorrow for GSP's workshop for PM Eastern Time, and then you can also tune on Tuesdays for Make Code Live with JP, and you can check out the project or projects later on in the show that we have on our learning system. The JP, let's see, last week was the Lucio Blaster, and then this week is the Clue the BLE Mini, Mini Lab. Yeah. So check those out over there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cornucopia. Time travel. All right. Time travel, look back to world makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Um, first up, so um, on Sunday night, we did our first Desk of Lady Ada since April 16th. And what happened on April 16th was it was the most uh, days of death in New York. Yeah. And that is when we, um, we were doing, uh, we were making PPE for the city. We were doing um, essential manufacturing for the city. So parts for ventilators, parts for things they asked us to do, we did it. And then, you know, that was like Monday through Sunday. And then Sunday nights is when we kind of do ask of uh, desk of Lady Ada. Yeah. And we just uh, we just ran out of gas in the gas tank. And we said, well... It was really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. you can't do it. And you so, you know, the death count was going up every day. The sirens were in the background and like, you know... Just don't stop. Most of the community's cool, but then there's always like, what's all with the sirens? It's like, well, they're because there's dead people. Like, you know, it's what do like, you think they're shut up jerk so um so there was a lot of that um so we decided well let's uh let's take a break from desk of lady Anna since it's sunday and it was it's kind of like the, the wrap-up of the week and it was just like these weeks were really heavy yeah so on this sunday uh the news came out it was our first day with zero covid deaths for the first time since the pandemic hit so um you know that sometimes the 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 reporting comes in a little bit different and you know maybe there was uh ones that'll come in later because mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. the, the way the data comes in but it, it's a milestone that the city announced that um as a community you know it was going down but this was the first time um it'd be great to have consecutive days consecutive weeks eventually consecutive months so we um we decided to do a desk of lady ada so you'll see that yay sundays around eight o'clock ish we're going to try to do desk of lady ada and um it, it's because some things are getting easier for us, but then a lot of things are getting harder. Um, we got a lot of our team back. A lot of things are going. Um, some things are getting way more difficult, um, and then some things um, we have means of production going again. So that's starting to happen. Um, but that's that's our plan right now. And uh, I was corresponding with someone today, and they said, "Oh, you know, last week you had a little segment. Maybe turn that into a standalone video." As when we we're talking about, please don't. Don't be, don't live through New York like we had to. Yeah. So like right now there. We did it. We yeah, didn't like it. We did it. Um, a lot of people died. A lot of people. We 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 all lost someone or something. Um, don't live through this. This is terrible. Um, unending sirens. Uh, feeling like the world is contaminated. Um, not being able to do anything you want in life. Being afraid. Um, having team members. Um, at, you know, at Adafruit, as you know, their their manager and their friend, um, worried that their relative's going to die. Yeah. Um, they're going to lose their job. Worried about all these things and and saying no, we're like we're going to get through it. But there's times where you don't know. And then, you know, a, a, a hospital ship coming in um, on our way to Adafruit, the uh, makeshift morgues. You know, the hospital yeah, over there. Yeah, the the, for, the so, yeah. cooler trucks. So, this is one of those times where it's like, yeah, that was unfortunate what happened to New York. Um, yeah, it would have been great to, if New York e even did things differently when it started. Yeah. Um, that's all the past now. Whatever's happening right now, though, and if you have any ability to influence it, um, tell your local politicians, tell your communities. Um, you don't have to go through this. This was terrible. Um, it's still terrible, um, but you don't have to go through this. So four months, 
in, we were able to do a show that uh, we stopped doing when it was just it was just getting worse and worse and worse by the day. So, anyways, Desk of Lady is back. Speaking of things back, Ada Box is shipping out this month. This month it's happening. It's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. So, um, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Um, we're shipping. We just literally got most of our staff back. We have our partners that work on us with Ada Box. So that's happening now. So you expect a notification soon. You'll get a notification that it's being prepared for shipment, and then you'll get a notification when it ships, and then you'll get your Ada Box. We're hoping to get all these out by the end of July. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. For your patience. Um, next up in Maker Biz News, um, Lady Ada, you spotted this. So yeah. Analog is scooping up. They're Maxim. looking to. I mean, I think that, you know, for companies this big, usually there is there's a couple bidding processes, so it's not a guarantee, but. It looks like Analog Devices, which recently picked up uh, Linear, um, another really high-quality brand of uh, electronic chip fabrication, is looking to get Maxim, another one of my favorites. So this is this yeah. is a really uh, big uh, consolidation in the industry. You know, TI uh, purchased National Semi. Those were like the two, you know, uh, very intense competitors um, making very similar chips, and they they're now one company. Um, Atmel and Microchip merge. Microchip has, you know, basically purchased Atmel and, and renamed the chips to own Microchip. Um, yeah. You know, I know uh, Cypress brought bought a lot of Broadcom stuff. I think Scilabs also purchased a lot of some other companies. Uh, I saw Maxim purchased Trinamic because we did the Trinamic uh, new product introduction a couple weeks ago, and it was like now purchased by Maxim. Um, so it's interesting. I mean. I, I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, so far, is I've, anything good or bad anymore? It's twenty twenty. <laughs> I, I you know I think that you know Maxim makes really good chips, and there isn't a ton of overlap with analog. So I think, you know, I don't think you have to worry about oh my god, is my chip going to, you know, that I'm using in a product about to be discontinued? Um, you know, I didn't we didn't see that when Atmel was purchased by Microchip, although some prices did go up. Um, but I don't know if they would have anyways. It's, yeah. you know, there's no control over I that. I think, you know, one thing, because we usually are either breaking news or really close yeah. when these things happen. Um, and you know, I've been writing about this for a decade now. Uh, the story is the same. Consolidation is here. Um, we're yeah. going gonna to see a lot of consolidation. Um, a lot of things are probably going to get accelerated because of um, the biggest crisis in all of our lives. Yeah. So we'll probably see um, companies that uh, can be taken over, taken over. Companies that need to merge or have to merge to just pool resources and grow a market because they're publicly held. Yeah. Um, we'll probably see a lot more of that. Um, I did have another post yeah. that um, you could talk about for a couple seconds. Yeah, sure. So, you know, these big electronics companies like uh, Maxim and Analog Devices and the big suppliers out there yeah, yeah. from Arrow to Mauser to DigiKey, um, they're built on traveling around the world like those oh yeah 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 you talked about this yeah those companies like electronica going to events yeah the the big Apex, suppliers Expo, yeah, yeah you know like the arm developer conference i just got a like a note for it um even adafruit was supplying a lot of electronics to these in-person events that had like tens of thousands of people hundreds of thousands flying for in yeah, yeah. Take so hotels. so what does that mean now so uh our, our my article that i had i had a picture of our passports not on the inside just the outside yeah and uh, basically, our passports are useless now. We can't. We can't go. You can't go anywhere right now with a U.S. passport. There's a very limited number of places. Um, there's some like Caribbean islands, and then there's like a few in there. And basically, everything is on pause. And for the first time, um, there's no travel. There's no plan to go to giant electronic supplier events. So what does that yeah. mean? Well, we built Adafruit in a weird way, and the weird way was: let's not do a retail store. Let's not build Adafruit that requires traveling. Um, you know, in fact, somebody once told us they're jealous of how we don't have to travel. Yeah, but that was only once, and the ninety-nine percent the other other time was just get us getting dunked on. Oh, you guys need to do workshops. You guys need to get on a plane and go to every school and do workshops. That's what you're missing out on. Yeah. And if we had built our company like that, we would be out. Like right now, it would be over. Sunk. Yeah. So one of the things that we did was focus on online learning, videos, like we're doing uh, here each week. You can go back. We've been doing this. We've been saying the same thing for a decade. Long time. Um, Lamore gets asked to speak at a lot of conferences, and we've been saying this for 10 years, and you can see examples. We say we would really like it to be online for the public, 
That way it's not just a private exclusive for a small group of people. And we would be, we'd like to be able to broadcast live from the factory because there's not a lot of USA factories. Yeah. And we can do it. We're experts at broadcasting live from anywhere. We can do it. Yeah. So um, that's happened a little bit, but I think that's, that's going to be another thing you see. So in addition to these mega mergers, you're going to see any company that wants to live, come with me if you want to live, yeah. you know, um, style. I think that's what we're going to see. A lot of online content. A lot of things like Adafruit Learning Systems. Yeah. A lot of things like Show and Tell. A lot of things like Ask an Engineer. Because, like, what other choice do we have? Obviously, we need to get things out. Like, we yeah. have our eye on MPI segment. So, where yeah, would you normally go to get new product introductions? You'd probably go to whatever, like, Electronica 2020. Yeah. Not this year. Nope. Cancel. And so, there's also the online communities like Discord, mm -hmm. where we have, you know, 22,000, 21,000 people there. Um, that's a pretty big conference, if you think yeah. about it. So it's going to be a little different, but the, this is, it's all, you know, in my head, it's all tied together. These mega mergers, the limiting of travel, you're going to have to come up with a different, better business model. The sturdy companies are going to be the one that make it. And I'm trying to get everyone, and I put a little paragraph in there, if, if you're an electronic company, you have to publish. Publish something every day. Because the attention spans are limited, more limited than ever. Yeah. And if you want to get electronics out there and learning out there, you need to publish something in some form every single day. Have to. And yeah. you have to have all those things. So work on the publishing tools. Anyways, that's going on. And then um, this came in today. Thank you, Eduardo. Look at this cool animation. Yeah, so this came Amazing. in from Eduardo. And I said, hey, is it okay if I show this in the show? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I said, well, how do you want me to credit you? And he said, well, you know, just my business name. I don't have much of a net presence yet. It's on a to-do list. But uh, animation crossing. So Eduardo made this. This is um, all the characters from Adafruit, or many of the characters. See the ladybox there and more. Thank you so much, I love, Eduardo. Um, I love look at the, the rendering of the eyes on Minerva and blink at a little tongue that comes out. Blip, yeah. Blip, blip, blip. <laughs> yeah. This was a delight. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Today was uh, terrible except for this email for me. So that was great. And look at Wazy Wheel little square masks. <laughs> yeah, a little mask on. Um, so this was delightful. Thank you so much for sending this. And Eduardo was working on some more stuff. A um, little bit of update. Adafruit.com slash Black Lives Matter. You can see what our team has put together for actions that we're taking specifically. Daily actions. We just wrapped up the buy one, give one um, campaign with DigiKey and Black Girls Code. So if someone bought one, we give one. We send one. So we just got past the first 100 tier. We're going to ask them if they want to, uh, if they need more. So thank you, everyone who purchased a Circuit Playground Express. You got one. And then what happened? Black Girls Code got one. That's the that we wanted to have the simplest possible charity. You, you buy did, one, they get one. You, you did buy the one, good thing, one. and you didn't even cost you anything. Yeah, so that is uh, the campaign. That one will restart it again at least next quarter, but we'll find out if there's more that we can do. And again, check out the actions and more that we can work on together. adafruitcom slash Black Lives Matter. Okay. Adafruit is an open source hardware company. Lady Ada to prove it. We got the receipts in the form of learning guides. How Two, many receipts do we have? 2,242. Ooh, we're getting close to yeah. uh, 2,250. That's a good number. Uh, this week we've got a bunch of guides from Erin. She worked on a glowing bottle castle and capacitive touch piano. This guide actually comes in two flavors, a make code version for people who are just beginning to learn how to code. And there's a circuit Python version that's much more advanced and has like music playback and like external capacitive touch buttons and stuff. Um, so those are for more advanced folks who've done some make code projects and want to try out CircuitPython. Uh, so check that out. It looks cool. And when you touch the buttons, they play little notes. And we have a video that we'll play after. Uh, uh, Do you want to play it now? Uh, which one? The castle. Castle, let's play it after we we'll finish. We'll play it at the end. Okay. Yeah, Melissa this is, did. This is a preview. A preview. Look, look at what you're going to see if you stick around. Um, Melissa did a project, um, e-ink weather station using Python. So using um uh, Blinka on Raspberry Pi, wiring up one of our 2.13 inch e-ink displays. Uh, she made a, a weather, an openweather.com interfaced displayer that just checks the weather and temperature and, and time and little icon um, a couple every few minutes and then uh, refreshes the e-ink display. Um, so it's a cool project. We're trying to do a couple more e-ink projects. Um, Brian and Katni worked on the PCF8591 breakout guide. That's a new product we'll talk about in the new product section. Uh, they did a guide showing how to use Arduino or CircuitPython to talk to this cool ADC slash DAC chip. 
John Park did a guide on turning a glove into a wireless Bluetooth MIDI glove. The Clue can do it with ease. Even made a nice user interface using the capacitive touch and buttons. Um, it can send CC messages to any um, app or synthesizer that does uh, BLE MIDI. And uh, it also has USB. So if you wanted to use USB MIDI, because like you don't have Bluetooth support, you can do that too. Uh, and then finally, Dylan um, made a Pipe Portal Raku remote. Uh, Raku uh, is like a, a media player and there's an, inter a, an IP interface that you can connect to um, if you want to control it. Uh, so he found some documentation and wrote a CircuitPython Pi Portal uh, remote control. It's kind of cool. I didn't know that you could do that with Raku. We documented it. And those are the new guides for the week. Okay. We're going to play the... Crystal Castles. Castle. your own LED animated touch responsive musical instrument from upcycled glass bottles, neopixel strips, and an Adafruit circuit playground. The bottle toppers are modeled from a mixture of modeling clay and powdered graphite that makes them perfect for capacitive touch response. So you can trigger a full two octaves of musical notes or upload your own wave files to play back with just one touch. Find the full build tutorial on the Adafruit learning system. Link is in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun Adafruit tutorials. All right, uh, today's Made in New York City factory footage will be a little different. Uh, I didn't have a day off today, so I didn't get the footage in. Um, I'll have double footage next week. Um, but you have some uh, New York footage. Be, yeah, I have some New York stuff because you don't see this in the news. So every single day there is a peaceful protest somewhere around New York City. Uh, Lady Ada and I have dispensed. Thousands of masks to some of the groups, and we will continue to help out the best we can. Um, this is one of the things that is beautiful about New York, people getting their message out, their voices heard, and uh, this big video, uh, I have this app that you know, blanks out people to make sure that uh, are respectful for the folks that are there. So cool use of AI. Yeah. And just to give you an idea of all the places we've gone to, uh, there's usually, uh, there's ones at... City Hall, and then Washington Square Park, and depending on the day, Columbus Square, uh, we checked out the uh, street art in lots of different places. So this is uh, our our pseudo contact tra <laughs> tracking app that I have, um, and so you you're geocaching yourself, geocaching and data logging myself. It also asked me what my temperature is, and then um, instead of uh, the construction footage out the window. Here is a beautiful cloud. <laughs> it was a really cool looking cloud. There's a silver lining. To it was the cloud. gorgeous. It was a, it was a very rainy day, but then the sun came out and uh, it was a beautiful sight. That's right. Okay. 3D printing. We have a few things this week. Uh, first up, we're going to show the uh, scoreboard project, and then we're going to go right to a speed up if you like Star Wars especially Millennium Falcons, you'll like this one. So we're going to play this back to back. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, what's up, folks? In this project, we're building a scoreboard using an LED matrix and CircuitPython. We thought it'd be cool to build an indoor game where you can shoot some hoops and show your score. So we built an IR sensing hoop that displays your score on an LED matrix. We 3D printed the parts and designed this to be an easy build so folks can make one at home. This uses an IR brake beam sensor to detect when the ball goes through the hoop. The IR sensors are secured to the 3D printed hoop with the wiring hidden inside. There's an arcade button on the side that's used for starting a new game and resetting the score. This whole build is powered by an Adafruit Feather M4 Express and the RGB matrix Featherwing. 
The code for this project was written in CircuitPython by Liz Clark. On startup, a bitmap gets displayed and checks if the arcade button has been pressed. When the button is pressed, a new game starts and shows the scoreboard. Each time the IR sensor detects break, the score increases by 2 and plays an MP3. If the button is pressed while playing a game, the score is reset and goes back to start. All of the code, images, and audio files live on the device like a USB drive, so it's easy to change and modify. CircuitPython makes it easy to code hardware, so you can build fun and interesting projects. This build features mounting holes, so you can attach this to a frame or tabletop. The Matrix Featherwing and Feather M4 Express are snap-fitted on the back of the display. A Stemma speaker is also on the back and plays audio files when you score points. Be sure to check out the Learn Guide for a full step-by-step -step tutorial on building this project. We hope this inspires you to build projects with CircuitPython so you can enjoy your time indoors. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. And don't forget, every single Wednesday we have 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro. So you can check that out. And we also have different shows and tells throughout the week, including ours. All right, it is time. DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi, on NPR. This week, T. Yep. All right, Lady Ada, what is the NPI of this week and who's from? I'm so glad that you asked. Well, this week's uh, NPI is from TE Connectivity. We've actually done uh, quite a bit with TE sensors. We stock a few of their sensors, the humidity and barometric pressure and temperature sensors. Um, we even did a really cool project with TE and DigiKey where we documented the way that their sensors are used in race cars. Um, so uh, check out if you Google and, and search for um, T Digikey and Adafruit um, all in one word. I can't remember the exact URL, but uh, you'll be able to pull up the video and you'll be able to see me check out uh, Formula E race cars and talk to some TE engineers about uh, how they fit sensors inside of them. But we're not talking about that today. Today we're going to uh, take a dip in the pool thanks to a new sensor from TE. It's the MS5839. Let's take a look at it. This is what it looks like. Uh, so this is a pressure sensor that is designed to be used in chlorine environments. So it's not just you know, waterproof or water resistant, it's also chlorine resistant, which is important because chlorine is what's not only in pools, but in the ocean uh, and uh, you know, lakes and rivers even sometimes. Uh, and it, was it is what causes corrosion of sensors. It can really damage them. Okay, so let's look inside this sensor. Um, so the photo on the, sorry, the exploded image on the left shows how the sensor is put together. Um, there's the ceramic substrate and then, um, you know, the CMOS ASIC, that's the actual I squared C conversion ADC part, the MEM sensor, which is, you know, a resistive uh, element. Then there's a, a sealant on top of that and it goes inside of a metal housing and the metal housing you can see has like a groove in it. 
Uh, so you can use an O-ring with this sensor, which I really like. And on the right, you can see how the sensor, um, you know, you basically want to use an O-ring and kind of pop it into a hole into, um, you know, it doesn't have to be used underwater. It can be used as shown here, like, you know, in a place in a pipe where there's some chlorine gas and you want to measure the pressure inside that pipe. Um, but you can have chlorine exposure and wetness exposure and the sensor will be fine. Um, okay, so next up, um, you do need the O-ring. It doesn't come with it. Um, the O-ring is what gives you the sealant so that um, the water or the gas doesn't leak into the rest of your assembly. Um, but thankfully, they uh, give you the exact specifications of the hardness and the diameter, so that's good. Um, what you see these sensors um, often used for, and this is an image of a fully assembled version of the previous one of the MS5837 uh, is underwater UAVs, like robots um, that go underwater. And they often have to, you know, to, to know how deep they are, they measure the water pressure. Um, and so this is like a fully assembled version of uh, the non-chlorine safe version of the sensor. And you can see it's kind of epoxied inside of this uh, hollow bolt. And then the connection wire goes out the back with power ground. Uh, data and clock, and then you attach this into um, your robotic element, and you, you add O-rings where the screw goes into the body of your rover. So that's what this is good for. Um, the data sheet has some interesting documentation. They actually show how they tested it. Uh, they did 40 cycles of submerging in a chlorine solution, um, then drying it out for uh, 18 hours, and then dipping it back in for six hours. And they showed that, you know, even after 40 dips, 40 cycles, there was um, no failure and no change in um, the, the output or the measurements or capabilities. Whereas you see on the very left, there's that like black blue line that's like spiking up. That's if the sensor doesn't have the uh, protective element inside with the, the gasketing and the, um, the potting inside. Um, one thing to note is that, like most pressure sensors, uh, this sensor has a range of 300 to 1200 millibar. Um, and that basically will not, it actually doesn't take you very deep because most altimeters are actually meant to um, work at lower pressure. Like they, they have a better low range and a high range because they're expecting you to go up a mountain and they're like, what's well, your altitude above sea level? They're usually not that great below sea level. So this sensor is specced to 300, 220, uh, sorry, to 1200 um, millibar. And that's, that's only about two meters um, below sea level, it seemed, in, in water, right? Because you're gonna have higher pressure. But this sensor um, can be used in extended range. So if you're using it in the extended range, you can see that when you get beyond 300 and 1200 on this graph to the right, it can go up to 2000, but you're just going to get error. You're gonna get, um, you know, a couple percent error. The error isn't that large. You know, it's maybe 10 max, maybe eight max millibar out of uh, 2000, so it's not bad. But just be aware you're not gonna get like that, like wonderful two centimeter precision um, the deeper you go. And at 2000 millibar, when I looked it up, that gave me a depth of 10 meters. So um, it's good for, you know, dive watches, swim watches, UAVs that are going into like a lake or a river or an ocean or a pool. Um, but this isn't going to be for something that does like deep ocean dives. Okay, where can they get it? I'm glad you asked. Uh, you can pick up a whole bunch and looks like Digikey got a couple thousand in stock. Uh, all you have to do is search for MS5839. You can go to this short URL if you don't want to type out the full part number. It's available in cut tape, uh, digi reel, and tape and reel. Okay, and there's a short video, so let's uh, watch it. Yeah. And check that out on DigiKey. 
Uh, little tip on all pages on DigiKey, there's a little short URL button now, and uh, that'll help you. This one, it's digikey.com slash short slash zbjv19. On Sundays, now we have Desk of Lady Ada, you'll see some of the DigiKey search tips and more, and that is INMPF of the week. All right, thank you. Hi, Okay, we're gonna jump right into new products. Ready? Yep. New, 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 new. All right, new. Um, <laughs> don't forget, we are now shipping uh, back to our old super fast shipping yeah. because uh, we've had the phase recovery in New York. We have our staff shipping safe and smart. Um, we're also shipping AdaBox this month. So thank you everyone for your patience. First up, Lady Ada. Okay, first up, we've got the SparkFun Quick Pie Hat. Um, uh, SparkFun has a lot of cool accessories for their quick boards, and they also work with all our SemiQT boards, so it makes it an easy win for us to pick them up because you can use them with our sensors. So this board plugs into a Raspberry Pi and gives you four, count them, four I squared C ports. Uh, so you can connect any, we have a couple dozen now, uh, I2C sensors that are plug and play. Uh, it plugs into any Raspberry Pi or a single board computer that has the I2C pins in the same locations. And you might be wondering like, why do I say single board computer? It's because the NVIDIA Jetson and other boards are kind of, uh, you know, the Google Coral are, oh, sorry. sorry, it's okay. We got excited. Um, the Google Coral have the same pin out. Uh, and so you can use um, the Adafruit Blinka library that gives you Circuit Python support on like a wide range of single board computers, and you can plug this in so you don't have to do any soldering. So let me show on the overhead real fast how this works. So you plug it in, it kind of goes like upside down, but that makes it for a very um, nice and easy assembly. So you can see here, here's the four plugs, and each one is, you know, there's basically the same I2C port. Um, it plugs into the 2x20 header like so. If you use extra long headers like we have in the shop, you can then plug in another um, bonnet or hat on top. And then you can just plug in any sensors like this barometric pressure sensor. We've got OLEDs. We've got an air quality sensor we just came out with. Um, all plug in very easily and then use our CircuitPython code on Blinka to get it running on your Raspberry Pi. All right, next up. Okay. Now we're ready for this thing. This is the TMP 235 breakout. We kind of wanted to make a um, analog temperature sensor that was plug and play with a Stemma JST uh, P, uh, pH connector on the end. So um, this is a really simple sensor, it's very low cost. Basically you give it three to five volts and then um, on, you know, on power and ground and then the third pin has an analog voltage and on the uh, back, uh, it even gives you uh, the formula for how to calculate the temperature. You take the output, you subtract half a volt, because um, that way you can go to negative uh, 50 degrees C, multiply by 100, and that's the temperature. So, you know, we have I squared C temperature sensors, tons of them, but once in a while you're like, look, I just want something really inexpensive, really simple. I just want an analog voltage input. This is very similar to the TMP36, which is very popular, but it's plug and play. So you can see here, you just um, pick up one of our STEMA cables, you can get it with alligator clips, with headers, plug it in, and you're ready to go. And that's it. That's that product. Okay. And next up to start is show besides our community and you and our team, Lady Ada, is? The PCF8591. It's a quad ADC and a DAC. It's a very interesting chip. Not exactly sure what this was designed for. Probably like a car radio though, because all every time I'm like, what is this for? It's always like a radio, you know, playback system for cars or something. But you get four analog inputs, 8-bit, and one analog output, which is unusual. You usually don't get both. Uh, and it's all controlled over I squared C. It's a really simple chip. We've got Python and Arduino code. And this would be really handy, I think. You know, I have the demo here with uh, a Feather, but I think it should be really great for use with, again, single board computers like a, a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson or Coral or any of these other Linux boards that have I squared C and you just want to add some like potentiometers or um, like analog, simple analog sensors and you don't want 
to get like a more expensive ADC and maybe you want a DAC for some reason, you want to like control a gauge or a, a bias voltage. It's only eight bits, but really that's good enough for many projects um, like volume control or, or contrast control or whatever. So here I've got uh, you know three potentiometers and as I twist them, you can see they range from zero all the way to the end to 255. So these are the, the three inputs. And of course there's one more input I don't have connected. Um, and it comes in a STEM QT format. So you can just plug it in. You can plug it into that uh, quick Pi hat we showed earlier and uh, works from three to five volts. So it's a great way to just add, you know, very simple ADC inputs to your uh, I squared C capable board. All right, and with that is All right, um, let's uh, jump over to top secret. Yeah. Um, while we're doing top secret though, let's uh, remind everyone adafruit.it slash discord, that is where we do all the questions and the answers. And uh, I have a couple lined up, but uh, Great. that'll just give you a shot to get there now. Join all 21,000 of us. Um, let's do some top secret. Right, out of the vault. Yeah, um, everyone's direct messages on Twitter for the last decade. Um, <laughs> surprise! Um, yeah, that's what's going to happen now. You think every DM is going to be leaked? Yeah, the Bitcoin that's thing cool. is just a distraction. Yeah. Because when you take out past presidents, Twitter accounts, current politicians, uh, the most, the richest person in the world, yeah. Bezos, had his account popped. Um, this cool. is all just a distraction because that's what you do. Everyone's like, oh, these, these criminals are so dumb. They were just trying to get Bitcoin. Um, probably not. Yeah. This was probably the distraction to get all that stuff. Let the blackmailing begin. Yeah. That is That is the term that, 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 they, that the criminals uh, say. Okay. Terrible. It, this is 2020. Yeah, but we have some electronic top secret. Okay. So first up, let's um, play this video. This is the uh, e-ink. Bonnet, yes. Yeah, so we'll play that, and then we're going to go to the overhead. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, it's a clear night here in Manhattan, as you can tell from my e-ink bonnet on a Raspberry Pi. This is running some Python code to read the weather and time from Open Weather Service and update it so you can see this cute little icon and the current weather in Manhattan. So this is an upcoming new product. Let's do the little buttons, and uh, so far working so good. Okay. So on the overhead, we have a few things. Okay. Let's go to it. Okay. First up. It arrived. Orange crab. So this is um, a really cool feather project. Um, it's got like this incredible, I think it's a lattice FPGA, some flash and some RAM. It's like this amazing routed board. I think it's like eight layers. Um, really beautiful O201 components. I don't know what this may be, a logic level shifter. Is it, TXB0801 or something. Um, it's got SD card, Orange Crab. It's got Circuit Python support coming. Oh, what is this? Uh, sorry about that. Lock. Okay. Uh, it's got Orange uh, Crab logo on the back, and um, uh, it's got Circuit Python support that is uh, going to be merged in soon. So it's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, this is like a super powerful feather. But it's feather format, so you can like use it with all the feather wings that are available. I think this is coming soon to a crowdfunding site near you. Yeah, we just got ours. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then uh, pop this this one over. So this is neat. I saw this on Tindy. Um, this is uh, this little PCB, this little Black Lives Matter PCB. You can search for it on Tindy, and it has names on the back. This is a lot of the social justice. Really beautiful silk screen. Yeah, this is a lot of the, and you can see. When you tilt it, you can see how it says Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And it has it down the side as well. So, you know, one of the things that you start to see with activism is there's code you, you can write. So we have things like the code for LCD screens. Yeah. So you can make a digital protest sign. And then there's some physical things. So we're starting to see some of these in the electronic and maker community uh, because there's a lot of people that want to see the change in society that people have demanded for a long time. So now you'll of course see it in our electronics as well and you so, can pick these up at osh park yeah know, osh park purple yeah and i got these from tindy and uh i believe the maker is donating as well okay so that is our top secret get back in the vault you. all right 
So we're going to do questions. Yeah. And then we're going to play the uh, newsletter. And then we're going to wrap it up for the week. Yep. We're just on time. Yeah. Almost. I'm trying to get there. Lots yeah. of stuff every week. Yeah. Okay. So great. questions from the chats. Um, the first one is... So this person has a CPX make code block for appending a file, log.txt, but it never gets written to the CPX's memory. Is there something I need to do first to enable writing to the CPX memory in make code? You know, I think a couple of years ago we did a guide on logging data with make code, but boy, it's been a while. There is, I think, um, a discourse forum for make code. You might want to post there. Yeah, they have their forum. Because, yeah, I remember it's possible, but I don't remember how. Okay, uh, next up. Adafruit can make code arcade handle TFT screens other than the 1.8 inch TFT screen on the Pi Gamer. And the follow up to that is how do you enable other screens if not? I think right now it really only supports the one screen, the ST7735, um, in 128 by um, 160. That's kind of the, the or 120 by 60 because it's, it's, it's QQVGA. Um, so that's the only size that it currently supports. But it's a very standard screen. It's a low-cost screen. That's why they picked it. Okay. Um, this one was from before from another chat, but I will add it. Uh, let me go to where it was at before. Um, where can you get the latest list of boards that support CircuitPython? I'm glad, glad you asked. asked. Yeah. Glad Real you easy. Asked. Glad you go asked. to circuitpython.org. And then click on downloads, and there's like 150 boards. They're yeah. all there, and you click on, just look for the image. You can search. You can there's a little search box. You can type it in, and it'll automatically update it, and or and then you can just click on it, and you can get um, the latest stable build, the latest beta build, and then like the bleeding edge, cutting edge release, and a bootloader updater if you want to try that as well. Um, so I'm going to answer the second part of this question first because that's the easiest thing. So yeah. so. Someone said, is, uh, is the following a dumb idea? Uh, there is no such thing as a, a dumb idea because a lot of engineering is what, is people t what have people tried that didn't work out or what have people tried that maybe we don't know the answer to? Yeah. So don't ever worry about that. There's no such thing, especially on our server. So you can ask anything. There's more ideas, more suggestions, the better. Um, so I'll just start with the beginning okay. of this. Is DIYing a Mickey Mickey for triggering a relay? A project to do. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna edit that. One. It's a good idea. Um, yeah, because people want to touch something and then that um, turns on a light or turns off a fan or like connect something together. Um, just make sure that when you use your relay, that you know you have a transistor driver for the relay because they're often high power, and then you need a flyback diode. But if you look online for like if you Google for like relay driver schematic, everyone's gonna show you pretty much the same one. And just follow that to make your interconnect because a microcontroller can't drive a relay directly from the pin. It needs a little bit of help. Okay. And then um, there's a biz question in the other chat. Uh, how many people are Adafruit? We're over 130 altogether. Um, we have about 100 in New York altogether. Some of us uh, work remotely. Some of us work on site. Some of us uh, do both. Uh, Lady and I have been at the factory almost every single day since March 11th ish, that's mm -hmm. when these things started. A um, couple little odds and ends. Uh, if you look at adafruit.com slash open safely, that's where we have our detailed information on not only what's the rate of shipping right now, it's it's fast. Yeah. Then we also have a list of our protocols that the entire team has stuck to. And you know, one thing just because like we're in the middle of uh, history, hasn't been written yet, is one of the things that we decided to do back in uh, early March was we had PPE and we also did staggered shifts and we also shut down uh, earlier yeah. than the state did in, yeah. in the city. So um, luckily, you know, knock on PCB, um, no one at Adafruit got sick, no one who got an antibody test, uh, you know, we're not going to share everyone's private information, but we could say everyone said it was okay for us to say that they all turned negative. Um, it'll be interesting to see, though, because the antibody test apparently eventually wears off. So we got ours not too long ago. Mm. Um, but some so people... So somebody, they may have gotten it so yeah. long ago that they got worn Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, straight up, um, as an employer of 100 plus people, it was scary because statistically when this first started happening back in March, the numbers were the numbers were like, well, 
Well, they one, estimated that 20% of New Yorkers had it. 10 or 20% of us either have it, had it, or will have it, and that means that you know, we were possibly going to lose someone on the team. Um, or maybe even as bad, someone could get it, and it's going to affect them for life. Mm. So we've managed not to get sick. We've managed to stick to our protocols. Um, the newest thing that's a little bit of a challenge as an employer yeah. is um, New York has quarantine rules. So if you come from out of state, that's right. and now it's like, like 20, 20 states, 20, 23 or 22 or 23 states, yeah. you have to quarantine. But that also means, you know, we have team members like, oh, my sister is in Texas. She's going to fly here this weekend. So that means that the family member has to quarantine, and that means our team member can't come in. That's right. So they have, the to, make different, they have yeah. to make different arrangements. And so far, you know, we've been able to... To work together and everything has worked out but it's just like it's a full-time job with this and I don't hear a lot of companies dealing with this especially in New York um, they're kind of looking the other way and that's what's gonna make this rate go back up so I'm hoping hoping there this isn't gonna be the thing that gets us yeah um, okay uh, follow up to the Mickey Mickey uh, trigger relay uh, relay feather wing yeah we have them you, you can use that yeah okay I think that might be the questions for now. Okay, cool. So uh, folks in the chat, get together, ask questions, help each other out. Um, it is now time for the Circuit Python newsletter, and then we'll Yay. see you on the other side and say goodbye and all that. So take it away, Kenny. Okay. It's that time again. This is Katney with your weekly Python on hardware news. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as we continue to navigate COVID-19. We are following the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we ramp up. We are working hard to get more items in stock, so if there's an item that's out of stock that you're looking to purchase, sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. CircuitPython Day is September 9th, 2020. Adafruit has chosen 9-9-2020 as the snakiest day of this year. We'll keep you posted on what's involved as the date gets closer. In general, events and happenings will include a CircuitPython team livestream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. More information will be forthcoming. Do you have ideas or suggestions for CircuitPython Day? Are you planning your own CircuitPython Day event? Let us know via email at circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. Maker Diary has developed a mechanical keyboard using the NRF52840 microcontroller to provide connectivity through USB-C and BLE 5.0 Bluetooth. The keyboard runs CircuitPython, so it's fully customizable. Just drop a new file onto the flash drive the board presents. Code is available on GitHub. Details at MakerDiary.com. The Adafruit Discord server has surpassed 22,000 members. This community is where we do all of our CircuitPython development transparently and in the open. Adafruit believes the Discord offers a unique way for CircuitPython folks to connect. Thank you to everyone who has been a member and everyone who recently joined. If you haven't already, you can join today at adafru.it slash discord. Microsoft has a Discord server for talking Python with Microsoft tools and technologies such as Python VS Code. They are offering cloud labs there where you can get swag. To join, visit aka.ms slash python discord. The Python Software Foundation is accepting nominations for their second quarterly community service awards. Information and previous winners can be found at python.org. Proposals should be made confidentially to the board by sending email to psf at python.org. Melissa demonstrates part one of her Python-powered custom animated LED sign series, covering the assembly of the sign and everything you need to do to 3D print and build the hardware. Subscribe to Maker Melissa's Lab on YouTube to see the next part in the series. The Talk Python podcast features Device Simulator Express. Maybe you've heard of the Circuit Playground Express, BBC Microbit, or the fancy Adafruit Clue. They aren't too expensive, ranging from $15 to $50 each. But for large groups, such as classrooms, this can be a lot of money. Moreover, getting your hands on these devices can sometimes be tricky as well. With an extension for VS Code called Device Simulator Express, you can have instant access to all three, virtually of course. This cool extension adds a visual emulator as well as the native interaction such as buttons and temperature sensors. Details and links to the episode are available at talkpython.fm. 
Serpano is a CircuitPython dev board designed for breadboards. It delivers 3.3 and 5 volts at 2 amps and an adjustable 1.8 to 12 volts at 3 amps, current measurement, and a feather-like pinout. It can be powered from USB, a 4.5 to 12 volt DC jack, or a LiPo battery. It also includes a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 LCD for data visualization. This is a first prototype. For more information and to follow development, check out Arturo182 on Twitter. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed the unboxing of his Seed Studio WIO terminal, ESP32 SPI networking API changes, and optimizing JSON.load. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. Greg Davil posts to Twitter, an update to CircuitPython being ported to the Orange Crab FPGA board. Code is available on GitHub. A blog now running on solar power. It uses a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with sensing provided by an Adafruit INA260 sensor read via Adafruit Blinka, the CircuitPython compatibility layer. Details at lurentius.com. Tyler Crumpton posts to Twitter a foot pedal to start and stop audio for transcription. A sewing machine pedal and one resistor are connected to a Seedwino shower board running Adafruit CircuitPython 5.3.0 and 12 lines of code. The pedal acts as a variable resistor to measure voltage using an analog pin. Python T is back with the incredible Lorena Mesa. They discuss the Pi Ladies overhaul, PSF election reform, and PSF advocacy. Check it out at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. Time series simply represent data points over time. Julian posts to Medium, Darts, time series made easy in Python. This article introduces Darts, their attempt at simplifying time series processing and forecasting in Python. Learn five Python features you probably don't know in this article on TowardDataScience.com, including a few functionalities that are less commonly used, but still immensely useful. Tim Grenholm posts a goodbye party held for the end of life of Python version 2, including this snaky cake. Read about eight world-class software companies that use Python in this article by Jason Reynolds on RealPython.com. Text Hero is a Python toolkit to work with a text-based dataset quickly and effortlessly. It's very simple to learn and designed to be used on top of Pandas. Code is available on GitHub. Learn about extending Python with Go in part two of a Python and Go series on ardenlabs.com. Blur Detection 2 is blur detection with OpenCV in Python. Code is available from Will Brennan on GitHub. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers in single board computers continues to grow. There were no new boards added this week, but several are being worked on. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are seven new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Use a Pi Portal and CircuitPython to build a customizable remote that works over Wi-Fi to control a Roku media player, using the Roku external control protocol and taking advantage of the Pi Portal's touchscreen as a simple input method, in this guide from Dylan Harada. ElectionCal is a website that provides U.S. voting deadlines. Use CircuitPython to connect to the site, process data, and display it in a nice clean way on your Pi Portal, in this guide from Alvaro Figueroa. This greatly simplified overhaul of a 2017 project uses CircuitPython, a Feather M4 Express, and a PropMaker Featherwing to build new internals for a Lucio Blaster. Dual-stream native MP3 playback eliminates the need for multiple pieces of hardware previously required to play music and sound effects at the same time, and power, amplification, and NeoPixel circuits have been similarly simplified. Use the LED animation library to create highly awesome lighting effects in this guide from John Park. Build a stunning LED whip that reacts when you crack it using CircuitPython, the Feather NRF52840 Sense microcontroller, and the PropMaker Featherwing, including motion sensitivity with two levels of swing-based animations triggered by the motion of your arm, all easily customizable in this guide from Aaron St. Blaine. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 262. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a significant number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org slash libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, the main focus of Brian's work over the last week has been the AS7341 11-channel multispectral light sensor from AMS. This is a pretty neat sensor that holds a lot of capabilities in a small package. 
Within the 3 by 2 millimeter footprint are 16 paired CMOS light sensors for separate light wavelength bands, as well as two dedicated sensors with no clear filter, one near infrared, and one flicker detection sensor. One feature he finds particularly interesting is the LDR pin that allows you to control an external LED to aid in spectral measurement. Current controls allow you to use the LED to its full capacity without burning it out with too much current. In the CircuitPython core, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes. We use background tasks to ensure that things like audio, USB, and display keep working even while your code.py is running. Jeff's current project is to enhance this code and restore performance that we gave up temporarily in order to add the lower power mode that is helpful for battery-powered projects. Melissa worked some more on the Blinkapi portal library and wrote a guide for it. Along the way, she found several bugs with it, with some of them occasionally stopping her from continuing on the guide without addressing the bugs. Eventually, though, she was able to get everything working. She was able to get it running on both Raspberry Pi 4 and the FT232H so that it could be run directly on her computer. Check out the guide in the Adafruit Learning System. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they're holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. Pi Gotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. Pi Gotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020, with a single track of talks presented online. The call for proposals is now open at cfp.pygotham.tv. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. Pi India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for more information regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 22,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit Adafruit Daily to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week. And thank you so much, Katni. Yay! The best 10 to 15 minutes of Python news you can hear. That's right. Okay, so that's our show for tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in thank this you, week. Everybody. Don't forget, we are shipping Safe and Smart. Your orders support us. These are pre-COVID photos. <laughs> And um, we appreciate the orders. It keeps us going, keeps us fueled up. Um, I'm going to keep making new cards, new cool stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a lot ahead. Um, none of this is over. And, uh, you know, this is the company that's only around because of all of you. That's so right. thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week, 7 p.m. show and tell, 8 p.m. ask an engineer. Don't forget the rest of the shows. And then... Uh, Tonight, instead of a moment of Zener and uh, you know the usual music we play, uh, I'm just going to put a photo of Grant up. And once again, um, our thoughts and condolences are with all the people who knew Grant, worked with Grant, his family, and um, again, you know, unexpected things happen. Um, we were all given a gift, which was to see Grant's work. So um, if it inspired you, or if you know about it, or if you've heard about it. Um, share it. Share it with someone who might get that spark to be an engineer. That was one of Grant's missions because he talked about it a lot. Because that's what he spent his life on, showing the best of us and the, the most ingenious things we can come up with. So um, with that, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>